Hey guys, welcome back. Let's continue our discussion on migrating our on-premises architecture to AWS. So in the previous video, we spin up two EC2 instances, one in a public subnet and another one in the private subnet. Our public subnet had the internet access as we have attached an internet gateway to the web server router. But our private subnet, as the name implies, it had no any connection to the internet. Then we set up two security groups, one for the web server, we called it web server security group, and another one for the database server or the backend server, we called it database security group. And then we allowed inbound traffic to the database web server from the web server security group, such that web server can talk to our database server. So we tested this by SSH into the web server and then launching a ping request to the database server and by making sure we will get the response so it all work without any issue now if you guys can remember when we were launching these two instances we use the same private key we called it youtube.pem file so we downloaded that youtube.pem file into the local machine and within that directory we could ssh into the web server over the internet without any issue and once we are inside the web server we could not SSH into the backend server. We got an error. So what was the error? It said this web server did not have that youtube.pem file or the private key that was generated during the launch of these two servers. So that's true, right? Because uh, our PEM file was available in the local machine, but it was never moved into the web server. Now let me quickly show you that. All right, guys, so here am I in the AWS console, and these are the two servers, web server and the DB server. So let's try to connect to our web server first. I will click web server and go to connect, and this will give me SSH command to connect to it. Let me copy that, and I will take a terminal, and I am inside the folder where my PEM file is. In there, let me paste in the command SSHI youtube.pem, our private key, and here, the public IP of the web server. Okay, let's hit enter. All right, we are connected into the web server. Can you see the IP address 10.0.0.105, which is exactly the private IP address of our web server. Can you see this one here? Now let's try to ping the database server within the web server. I select the database server here and let's ping the private IP of the database server. Type ping and hit the private IP and you can see we will get the ping response. So our security group are properly configured. Now here's the thing guys, if I stop this and now I'm still in the web server and from here, let's try to SSH into the database server. I will select database server and go to connect and copy in the command and paste it here and hit enter. Then you get an error identity file youtube.pem which is our private key is not accessible so that the permission is denied. Since we don't have a private key inside our EC2 instance, it does not allow us to SSH into the database server from my web server. So how to resolve that? Well, we discussed two methods. The first one is copying the private key into the web server, then do the SSH, which will be successful, but it has some really bad consequences. The first one is if somehow an attacker compromise this particular web server, then he will easily get access to your private key. You might probably have multiple web servers using the same private key. Like in our example, as we had both the database and the web server sharing the same private key, you might have so many other servers, then the attacker will get access to all those servers appearing as you. So that's a bad practice. So what's the second one? The second one is SSH agent forwarding, which is the main focus of this video. In SSH agent forwarding, what you will basically do is that you will forward the private key to the web server. So in the web server, you can SSH into the database server. So it's basically passing the private key onto the web server during the time the connection is established. Once the connection is terminated, then the private key is no longer there in the web server. So you don't have to worry about uh, attacker hacked into the web server and you know capturing those private keys. However, remember that still attackers can hack into the web server 
and get the private key during the time you are connected to the web server from your local server. But anyway, this is way better than storing the private key inside the EC2 instance, right guys? So let's do that. So I'm going to exit into my local machine. So now I am in my local machine. I'm in my downloads folder. Now I am using Mac. So in Mac terminal, SSH agent is already available. So if you are using Windows, you can use PuTTY. In Linux also, you can use a suitable SSH agent. So the first step is that we need to add our PEM key or private key into our keychain. So let's add that. Now our SSH agent is referred by SSH-add. And let me show you one other thing. If I type SSH-add slash L, it will show all the private identities that currently exist. So you can see there's no any private keys associated with the agent yet. So let's add one. Let me type SSH-add dash capital K. Then I will add my YouTube.pem file. Hit enter. You can see it says identity added YouTube.pem. Let me clear the screen and let's try SSH dash add dash L. There you go. We have our private key. Now let's connect to our web server within our local machine. Earlier the command that we used was something similar to this. SSH dash I then the private key and then the IP address of the web server. But this time we don't have to specify the PEM key because SSH agent is going to go through all the keys associated with the keychain and find the matching key from the keychain. So let's see that. So now I'm going to connect to the web server. So let's type SSH dash A. So early it was I. Now this time on you have to use A capital A then you don't have to specify any private key but just the IP address of your public web server. Let's go to our public web server here. This is our public IP address and if I click connect you have to add the prefix EC2 user. So let me copy that and paste it here. So SSH dash capital A EC2 user at the IP address. Hit enter. Awesome. We are connected to our web server. Now we are inside the web server. You see our private IP address of the web server. Now let's check whether SSH agent forwarded that private key. Let me type SSH dash add dash L. There you go. So this is the private key that SSH agent has forwarded onto the web server. Now we should be able to SSH into our database server inside the web server without having to face any issues as we already have the private key within the keychain. So let's try that. So I will go to database server here and connect and let me copy the last part here. And in the terminal, let me clear the screen and type SSH dash A. It's not I, it's A. And then the IP address of our DB server. Hit enter. There you go. Now we are inside the database server. Can you see the IP address? It's 10.0.1.142. So which is the private IP address of our database server. Beautiful. So guys, this is what I want to show you in this video. So this is the recommended way to connect to your private instances via SSH. Now that we are inside the database server, let's try to run a yum update. Let me type yum update dash y hit enter well it failed why it failed because it does not have any internet connection so now we got an, another issue somehow we got into the database server but still again we cannot download the security updates or the database update from the internet so what's the solution here we have to have a net gateway or a net instance in the public subnet where our backend servers can talk to internet via the net gateway or the net instance. So that's the topic for the next video. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video. I'll see you soon.